Coming up on Tech Thing, Google's Daydream View, Shannon's magic face-mounted phone VR portal is here. Free and geeky apps we use all the time. Monoprice's Monolith M560 play in our headphones. AudioQuest Night Owl laptops that roll with 16 glorious gigabytes of RAM. And yes, yes, Patrick, you can stream Doctor Who online. All coming up on Tech Thing, episode 100. Patreon.com slash tech thing is the place to go if you get something useful out of this episode. Seriously, please consider contributing to tech thing at patreon.com slash tech thing. Our patrons make the show possible. Thank you. She's Shannon Morris and I'm Patrick Norton. And this is Tech Thing, where we make technology behave. <laughs> Especially in episode 100. <laughs> that was really hard. I was like, what do we say at the beginning of the episode? I know I did it wrong. It's okay. It was close enough. It was it was <laughs> hey, good. everybody. Welcome to this episode of Tech Thing. My name is Shannon Morse. <laughs> and my name is Patrick Norton. And we, okay, episode 100. Episode 100. Isn't that crazy? We are four episodes away from two years of Tech Thing. Yay! Thank each and every one of you for watching so and awesome. uh, joining us on this odd little journey with technology we've been having. Yay! And, uh, thanks again to all of our patrons because you make the show possible. And, uh, you know, in celebration, a lot of people have complained oh, no. about my broken phone. And the you reality had a was screen protector. the screen protector was shattered, but I had to pull it off because it was separating. And underneath the screen protector, it was perfect. Oh. It was so perfect, I borrowed a phone to take a picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> and 36 hours later, before my screen replacement, my oh, screen no. cover replacement showed up, I dropped it while getting out of my truck. And look, kids. Are you serious? I'm officially on my third iPhone 6S screen. Wow. That's okay. Well, at least you, you have an iFixit kit so you can fix it yourself. <laughs> Thanks, iFixit. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm also like, I bought it. When I originally bought it, within the oh, first man. week of owning it, I had actually bent it and shattered the screen. And then right. I immediately have been very good about happened. keeping it in a case. Well, I'm glad you've been keeping it in a case. It's unfortunate that right after you removed the screen protector, it broke. But we'll it get we'll get you a new one for about 36 hours. <laughs> okay, VR. VR. Depending on how you look at it, Daydream View VR headset by Google is either the cheapest way to get VR because $79, or not so cheap. Yes. Because you have to own a Google Pixel to you use it. You do, yeah. Uh, so luckily, this one is available for $79. It's called the Daydream View. And this is a great picture of it right there, although that color is not available yet. It's available in three colors that look, they, they look like workout clothing. They're this pretty gray hue, and they also have a red one uh, farther down on this website. But oh. <laughs> I know, it's so pretty. But unfortunately, you're right. It's only available for three a few different phones. I have the Pixel, so I'm mm -hmm. able to use it with my Pixel XL. Uh, when I pre-ordered this, I was able to get a coupon code to get this for free, nice. but now it's $79, so I was able to get this for free. Um, didn't even have to pay shipping, so that was nice. But it will also work on the Moto Z, the Z Droid, and the Moto Z Force Droid as well. Uh, the things about this one is it's the lightest VR headset other than like cardboard well, that you say, can get on the market. But it's so much more comfortable than cardboard. It's very comfortable. And it looks yes. much more. And you don't have to hold it there like you do with cardboard. And it feels <laughs> so much more comfortable than the last of them. Yeah, it's nice and soft, like the, the fabric is very mm -hmm. soft on here. Another cool thing about this one is it's hand washable. So if you wear makeup or if you get sweaty or anything like this, which this one is a lot more breathable than some other VR headsets mm -hmm. that I've tried, you can take this out and it looks really creepy if you just wear it like that. It but does. you can hand wash it so you can stick it in a sink and wash off all the dirty, gross makeup that you get on it if this you're is like a me. Big, this is a big plus. Does it fit yes. over glasses? It does fit over glasses. Nice. So luckily, of course, if you have larger glasses, like nerd glasses mm -hmm. like I have, then it will give you a little bit of a crease along the side. Mm -hmm. But it does fit glasses around the edges because, as you can see here, it is very open. So it gives you nice. a nice open space. Now, unfortunately, that's not going to fit perfectly on every single face type that's out there because humans come in various shapes and sizes. Yes. So when you put it on your face, you'll notice a little bit of light coming in around your nose if you don't have a very large nose. And you might see it around your cheek, too, or around we the side. We could totally caulk that gap. <laughs> don't you put caulk anywhere near my daydream view. Thank you very much. <laughs> you can keep that for your own technology. <laughs> so one of the weird things with this one, okay. and this doesn't exist for a lot of VR headsets in right. the world, except for like the PlayStation one, where you have two controllers right. for video games. Or the HTC Vive. Or the HTC Vive. Yeah, this one just comes with one little remote. 
And it's a four button controller. Oh. Yeah, it's cool. So you can do aiming like you would with a Nintendo Wii, for example. Uh, you can go to menus, you can do volume up and down with these two little side notches right here. And uh, you can pick things up and you can like play fetch with a fox. And like, you know, that was one of the weird things I did. As soon as you did that, all I could think was like virtual fishing, like in a <laughs> Japanese arcade. And it does come with a nice little rope that you can tie onto here and put it around your wrist so you don't end up throwing it at like, I don't know, Strangers. whatever is in your house that you are looking at at the time. So it's very, very handy to have this with you. And it's also quite intuitive. I noticed that it didn't have much lag when I was using this. As far as, as soon as I pointed at something, it immediately pointed too. So it's very responsive too. I should correct myself. I immediately thought VR controls and thought of HTC oh. Vive. HTC Vive does have two controls. Yeah, no it need does. to email me about that. Yeah, yeah. Were you worried about the phone falling out of the... Oh yes, the, I was. The, the <laughs> <laughs> so I was very worried about that. Um, luckily it works with the Pixel XL either in the case or out of the case. When you set it inside the, the Daydream view, you need to unnotch the little thing at the top, fold it down, and it sits like that. And then you sit your phone inside of it and refasten it at the top. Now, I was like, that seems a little bit like it's gonna fall out, but it's very sturdy. It's not going to fall out of there. And it's got these nice little rubber feet around the edges okay. too. So it sticks to the phone really nicely and really easily. Cool. Uh, so luckily, I didn't have that problem. Uh, but you're probably wondering what kind of apps are available for this. I think Google Street View is probably my favorite. It is so cool. You're able to walk around in Google Street View mm -hmm. to like different famous places around the world, like the Taj Mahal was one of my favorites. So you're able to walk around the Taj Mahal and using a VR headset to use Google Street View, like you can actually get a sense of how big the Taj Mahal is. Mm -hmm. And that's never something that I felt seeing it on a monitor. Sure. So that was really, really cool. Was it really, really big or really, really small? It was big. It's huge. No, I'm just asking. I've never seen it before, like with VR. So, and I've never seen it in real life. So, I have no okay. idea of the size comparison that I should have. But looking at the Taj Mahal through VR, I was just like, "Whoa!" So, I was, I was sitting in my office looking at the ceiling through the VR, and I was just like, "It is so." Big, that's what she said. So I was just like, this is so cool. Uh, there's about 60 different applications that are available. There's some video games. Uh, there's some video apps that you can use, like YouTube VR is really cool. Uh, there's a fantastic- is it actual like VR videos? Or yes, is it like a it VR is. interface? Uh, so one that okay. I tried, and strangely enough, my friend Trace Dominguez, he was in it, and I was just like, oh, hi. But it was my, made by Seeker and Discovery Digital Network. So it was a video of going up to uh, the, the, the top I think it's stratosphere of uh, the planet Earth, so you could actually get to the edge of space. They used a weather balloon to take you up, oh, and nice. they had a 360 camera on it, so you could look around as you're going higher and higher and higher up into the atmosphere. I like very, it. very cool video. I really enjoyed it, and that was available through YouTube VR. A fantastic be beast. There's an app for that, so you can. It's kind of like checking out Newt's cabin, and then he oh, takes you to go see some of the monsters from the movie. So you you get to like you know, use your magic wand with the controller and feed different things. It was really cool. I thoroughly enjoyed that one too. It was very cute. Uh, I did notice with these adjustable straps that mm -hmm. they are not great for smaller noses like mine. They tend to fall down a bit. So when I'm wearing it, I have to adjust the strap so that it's very tight. Like now you'll notice it's a little bit loose mm -hmm. and it slips down on my nose like it just falls straight over my nose. So it needs to be tightened quite a bit, bit to keep that from happening. But luckily these straps didn't hurt my face and this is so comfortable that it doesn't hurt the front of my face. It does keep a, make a little bit of a red ring, but it's not that bad so at all. So it wasn't like 15 minutes and take it off. No. It was, okay. <laughs> no, I had that thing on for like a good half hour or something like that. Uh, the phone pairs automatically via the Daydream headset, via NFC. The controller pairs via Bluetooth and it takes a USB-C charger, which is right on the back. You should have one if you have a Pixel phone, so you should be good to go. Uh, there is no need to plug in the headset itself, so it's it's dumb tech. There is, n n other than NFC, there's no technology in here other than like the nice little lenses. No buttons, no controls. Yeah, there's nothing in this. It's all in the controller, Don't which is really lose cool. This. <laughs> My Pixel XL got very hot in the daydream Ooh. really quickly, especially up at the top, which I was like, whoa, like it was very hot to the touch after about 20 minutes or so. Some reviewers have said they noticed that on their face too. I didn't. Maybe that's because I like my rooms cold. After we're done caulking that, we can put a fan on it to cool it down. No. <laughs> I also noticed a little 
little bit of lag during the Fantastic Beasts yeah. demo, and that was whenever I was like changing to a different scene, and it might be because there was so much going on in that demo. Right. There was a lot of movement and stuff like that. That might be why. I don't know, but that was the only one that I saw lag in. Uh, the Pixel XL is QHD, so the pixels aren't overly obvious, but mm -hmm. if you look really closely, you can see little pixels be there like everywhere, <laughs> so yeah. you know, keep that in mind. Uh, since there is no hood over the phone, if you're in a bright room, for example, when you put the phone in there and strap it on, you will, will see a little bit of light coming in through here. Don't need caulk for that one. <laughs> yeah, you could just like, yeah, stick some duct tape over that or something like that, but or you will see some light glare at times. So is, is it that, the best? I mean, does that like pull you out of, if you sort of um, turn and all of a sudden you're, you're, you're I didn't notice that much or? whenever I was actually watching a scene in okay. there, but when I was changing scenes, I could really see the glare okay. because my screen went black and I was like, oh, there's dust on my screen. I should clean that. So at those times, it did take me out of the virtual reality feel. Uh, so is it the best one on the market? No, definitely not, uh, but it is also $79. So it's a really good price for a virtual reality headset. Obviously, it's more of a conversation piece, mm -hmm. like you're not gonna use this all the time, but it's fun. It is so, so much fun to use. Have you tried like all 60 games at this point? Are no. you working with them? <laughs> I have downloaded a ton of them though. Uh, the games are very, very fun. There's uh, they, I'll have to tell you my favorites in the show notes because I don't remember the names of them exactly. Are they expensive or are they all free? No, um, there's a few that are a little bit costly, a few mm -hmm. dollars. There's one that's about ten ninety nine, one game. But most of the other video apps are completely free. Uh, there's a camera app that I want to check out called Cardboard Camera, and you can use that on your Pixel XL to take right. a three hundred and sixty degrees photo and then bring it up in the VR so that you can actually look around at your photo with the VR on, which looks really cool with the example <laughs> photos that they had. So I want to check that one out too. But in the videos and in the different apps that I did try, uh, I was really pleased with it. They just have a very small mm -hmm. store to buy from because it's just 60 apps and it's it's all proprietary. There is It doesn't go into the original Google mm -hmm. Play Store. It's all just a separate Play Store just for the Google J Daydream view. So keep that in mind too. Google Earth VR? No, oh. not yet at least. That one's just available for the Vive, I believe. So at time of recording, it is not available on the Daydream View. I know, but they have Street View though. That one's very, very cool. Highly suggest it for anybody that gets the Daydream View. It's cool. Thumbs so, up? Yeah, I would say, what are you doing? Oh, it's mad at me because it's been in here for so long. There you go, you're done. The oh, I forgot to mention too, it has a little controller place. So you c if you're traveling with this, you can set your controller inside the Daydream View and then it just holds on to it so you nice. don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about losing it. It's really cool. It's cute. Yay. So yeah, all in all, I really like this product. Um, obviously, it's not the best one on the market. You do need to have a specific phone right. for it, which is a definite negative on it. But mm -hmm. if you do have the phone already, I mean, you might as well get it because it's $79. So it's cheap, it's fun, and it's definitely like a family thing. And you don't need a $1,000 PC or $1,500 PC. Very true. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, you can email us, ask at techthing.com, or you can tweet me at snubs. Three questions answered, three reviews, three picks, all in three minutes. I doubt it will ever be three <laughs> minutes, but this week's rapid fire roundup is three incredibly useful apps for geeks that you might have forgotten about. Are you ready? Yes. Go. 7-Zip, because while I almost never zip archive files anymore, I need a tool to decompress all the things, and I keep finding things to decompress, like Diet Pie, which I'll review <laughs> next week, I swear. Uh, packing and unpacking, like uh, 7-Z, X-Z, B-Zip 2, G-Zip, Tar, Zip, Wim. Uh, Ooh, it'll gosh. unpack uh, AR, ARJ, CAB, CHM, CPIO, CRAM, FS, DMG, EXT. Fa I could go on for like Basically three. Basically all the all things. All the things. <laughs> if it has ever been compressed, or you need it decompressed, It'll do it. 7-Zip uh, can AES-256 encrypt 7-Zip and ZIP files. Uh, it integrates with the Windows Shell. There's a command line version, and you can get it at 7-zip.org. It's awesome. It is awesome. What's number two? SD card formatter, which I use constantly from the <laughs> SD card association because I am constantly doing weird thing to micro SD cards. Um, well, actually, it's That's not- That's what happens when you play with Raspberry Pis. Yeah, okay, so look, this app does one thing. It formats SD cards, even when they've been overwritten by weird, peculiar f cameras, Linux-ish <laughs> OS's on desktop devices, audio players, your cousin that did God knows what with the SD card, you loaned them at the family reunion, thanks cuz. <laughs> Whatever, SD card uh, formatter cleans it up, uh, 
Uh, well, actually, it does two things. Uh, it, it formats the file, and and if you turn size adjustment on, you'll turn that 2.08 gigabyte micro SD card back into a 32 um, <gasps> 29.8 yes! gigabyte micro SD. Yes. Yes. That's always such a huge problem. Runs on Mac or Windows. Linux can mount all the things already, so you probably <laughs> don't need it there. That's true. <laughs> SDCard.org slash download slash formatter underscore four. Yeah, we'll put that link in the show notes. SD Card Association. <laughs> Technically, this is not an app. Okay. This is a distro. <gasps> But for, say, panicked recovery of files off of a dead PC, keep a live Linux boot drive around. Yes. Uh, Ubuntu.com, or uh, Ubuntu at Ubuntu.com is the classic. That's but what I I'm am using still here. a huge fan of the very stripped down puppy Linux. It's a personal fave. Checks up a whopping 100 megabytes uh, on a USB thumb drive. It's so cute. It's so fun. Yeah. It boots fast, it takes no space. You have another suggestion. From I do. a slightly different perspective. Well, this is because, you know, InfoSec, information security, <laughs> penetration testing. Kali Linux is a huge one that a lot of people will bring around on a flash drive because you don't necessarily want to use it every day. Mm -hmm. But if you are working in a lot of security and privacy apps, this one comes with a ton of them pre-installed. So you can find Kali Linux. It's over at Kali.org. And if you're interested in all the tools that it works with, Oh my goodness. Are these all pre-installed? Uh, Aircrack, yeah, I believe most oh. or all of them are pre-installed. Uh, some of them, like Metasploit, you'd have to install. I believe Metasploit used to be available through Kali, but it's not anymore. At least it's not listed. But Wireshark is on here. There's an SDR app on here. There's Aircrack. Uh, there are pretty much everything that you would need if you want to get your hacking on. So if you're like me and you're interested in penetration testing, Kali Linux is the place to be inside of a Linux operating system for that kind of stuff. Don't use it every day, though, because it's it's not made for that. It's made for <laughs> penetration tests. It's made for the attack. Yeah. <laughs> because I can't count number four, <laughs> VLC Media Player. That video file oh, won't VLC. play. Try opening it up in VLC. Mm -hmm. uh, free, open source, plays just about uh, anything, files, disks, webcam, streams, on most uh, any OS with no additional codec packs, at least if it's MPEG-2, MPEG-4, H.264, MKV, WebM, WMV, MP3 show. I mean, it's actually, um, it's kind of ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can find it. Wait, learn more, and oh yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, Motion JPEG A and B, uh, WMV 1 and 2, WMV 9, VC1, Sorensen. I mean, this is this is a lot of stuff. Pretty much everything that you need. Pretty much everything that you need. And where can you get that at? Videoland.org nice. slash VLC. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, it's also available as a Windows Universal app from the store, but the Windows Universal app doesn't support DVD or Blu-ray playback, oh. so you want to get the desktop version from Videoland.org. Okay. Uh, which I should point out, I have been snooping in the Windows store mm -hmm. uh, in search of delightful Windows applications that work within the universal environment, and I bring to you Wi-Fi Analyzer. Ooh. There are useful tools in the Windows Store, um, and this is just... Oh, this looks very similar to the one I download on Android called Wi-Fi Analyzer. Yeah, well, let me see if I can... And obviously that. it is free, but there's a pro version. Yeah, well, there's, yeah, there's, there's paid upgrades. But yeah, it's, 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 it's aesthetically pleasing, and it's all the Wi-Fi data. Very cool, I like it. Wi-Fi data for our network here at the office, which I'll be changing the settings on. <laughs> do you guys have a favorite geek app? We know that you do, and you can email those over to ask at techthing.com. It doesn't matter what operating system it's on. You can email ask at techthing.com and we'll collect them, we'll share them with everybody that watches the show, and I believe your wife has a Mac, so we can review Mac apps as well. We're in. <laughs> Might want to ask her before stealing our computer, though. Just saying. Yeah. yeah. Only if I want to preserve the marriage. <laughs> and I do, because you just... Hell hath no fury like a woman's computer that has been borked by software that wasn't supposed to be installed on it. Yep, true story. Mm. <laughs> ask at techthing.com, or you can tweet us at techthing. Got a question? Curious to see us review something? Got a tip or an idea? Please fire them out to ask at techthing.com or you can tweet at techthing, at snubs, or at Patrick Norton. And hey, if you want to be part of the crew that makes this show possible, please contribute to the show at patreon.com slash techthing. Just a dollar an episode will make a difference and you'll get access to all of our patron-only content. It's good stuff, people. And hey, if you can't donate, we totally understand. Keep watching, share the show with your friends, and hey, keep sending in those emails and tweets because you make it possible for us to do the show. There's so many of you with so many ideas and we want to do it all except for the whole sleeping and eating problem we need to sleep and eat in any case thank you so much for supporting the show no matter how you do it it is a pleasure making it for you each and every week
With Model Price announced their new monolith lineup of home theater gear, tons of amps and speakers, they also announced a pair of magnetic planar headphones. Ooh. And somewhere inside of, I should I should pause for that. You know you're getting into the fancy headphones or the headphones that people Whoa. want to think fancy when they come with a case and you start undoing zippers and there's Whoa. detachable headphone cables. Fancy. So, these are the Monolith M560 Planar headphones, $199.99. Planar for Planar Magnetic, which means instead of a, a driver, mm -hmm. a, a dynamic driver like a speaker, it's a big flat piece of plastic that vibrates the music into your ears, uh, which is a very big audio kind of file thing. We've talked about that, so I'm not going to get too deep into That's it. That's a hardcore. Yeah, well, a lot of people were really curious. Is this a Monoprice miracle? Is this one of those amazing things that Monoprice does that make everything super awesome? Hmm. Okay, first up, I gotta correct. There's there are a lot of people like, these are the cheapest planar magnetics that have ever been made. They're not. Oh, no. that's good to know. Yeah, these would be the cheapest planars out there. Uh, these are the Fostex T50 RP Mark III, which are technically not sealed, sell for 130 bucks, and while they aren't flat from 100 hertz down to 10 hertz, like a lot of the expensive planar magnetics, ah. the T50 RP sound amazing for the cache, they have tremendous amount of detail coming from the drivers, and there is a crazy modding scene. Okay. Uh, in part because these are stone ugly. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> they are what they are, and they are all about, you know, basically playing back music. Okay. So. For $70 more, let's talk about Monolith M56, excuse me, M560s. Okay. These are sealed and they have removable wood covers. You'll see a little arrow here. That's where you can dig your finger in and oh, pull the wood cover off. And That's neat. Do not try to take the backs off of these uh, with them on your ears. I'll tell you why. Because if you slip, it goes like that oh. because there's a magnet that holds it onto the ear cup. Ouch. That magnet snaps this lid down yeah. right next to your ear. So, did you do that? I did that. Oh, dude. That hurts. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you got a fitted case. They put a quarter inch adapter in the box. I was a little concerned. I'm like, oh, there's no markings on the cable. Which one's right? Which one's left? Genius. Doesn't matter. Reversing the cable into either ear cup, left it's stays left and right it stays auto right. It switches it? Wow. Yeah. That's I, really cool. That actually makes me really, really happy. You kind of have to dig like this way okay. is left. There's, if you look on the inside, you can finally find the left over there. Oh, okay. Um, they weigh about a pound, which is not heavy for planar magnetics, um, mm. but it is not the most ergonometric design. Yeah. There is not a lot of clamping force heavy. on these. Let me take my hat off since it's officially winter here at the Hack 5 <laughs> warehouse. It's um, cold in the warehouse. <laughs> you know. There's not a lot of clamping force. They kind of hang down more than get squeezed over your ear. So do they? Um, do you feel like they're actually cupping your ears like they should? Kind of. Oh, they're sort okay. Of in, you know, it's good to not, know. There's just not a lot of clamping force on these, even after bending the snot out of the halo to try to tighten them up. Um, they're kind of they kind of hang around your ears, and okay. I I expect you know when when you've got sort of a you know, an ear cup, I expect a good seal because yeah. a good seal is usually critical for audio. Yeah. Um, you know, I almost felt like if I pressed them in a little bit, the sound got a lot better. Oh. I could be deluding myself. Uh, I also really wish the ear cups were larger, but frankly, I have huge ears in case you've never <laughs> noticed. They are large. Um, it, it is what it is. So, uh, I, I like bigger ear cups. Um, first thought, these were very easy to drive for a planar magnetic. Your cell phone will uh, have enough power uh, to feed them. Cool, um, that's good. I think they have a little more low-end oomph than the Fostex T50RP. Uh, they kind of start to drop off around 100 hertz. Um, and again, these are way easier to drive than the Fostex, so you're not gonna need an external amp. They seem to be very, very bright. Oh. Lots of treble. Um, so good for of, vocals? Well, good for vocals, good for cymbals. There's tends to, there's kind of an audiophile thing where it's like lots of high-end, lots of sparkly, mm -hmm. gives you a kind of a, you know, more of a sense that lots of room detail, lots okay. of, uh, I think I I like flatter, less, what they call forward headphones. Well, yeah, you listen to like a lot of rock. I listen to a lot of rock. I listen to a lot of bluegrass. I listen yeah. to a lot of, I mean, I listen to Yo-Yo. I, I, at least once a week, I'm listening to, you know, Yo-Yo Ma playing Bach sonatas. It's a thing. <laughs> um, driven cool. hard in full, like, electronic dance music or punk rock rage, I think they get really harsh and mm. really sibilant. Maybe they need some more break-in. Um, I don't know uh, if that's the situation or if they just kind of get blown out when you turn them up, um, okay. which kind of happens when you have less expensive uh, headphones a lot of the times. You will need a headphone amp to drive the Fostexes 
uh, as loud as these will get because these oh, are wow. so much easier to drive than these. Okay. Um, at human listing levels, um, Monoprice's M560 were just not as detailed or as clean as the $70 cheaper Texas to my ears. Um, not a fan of the sound with the backs off of the M560s. Maybe I would like it better if I had a tighter fit. Okay. I will continue to experiment. But I definitely prefer these sealed rather than open. Yeah. And uh, I'll I be curious to see when people with you know the thousands of dollars of equipment start measuring these and uh, to find out what the actual performance uh, as measured is. Okay, cool. Test performance. Hmm. So. So moving on. Stepping things up a notch. Um, my favorite headphone, uh, I was kind of like, I was always like $300. You never need to spend more than $300 yeah, for a headphone. Yeah. Like I'm good. Like, don't get me wrong, Full Call makes a fantastic set of $4,000 headphones, but I'm never going to sell my truck to buy a set of headphones. Right. Um, <laughs> these are AudioQuest Night Owls. Um, these are about $600. The original uh, audio, I say, these are AudioQuest Night Hawks. Night I get Hawks. ahead of myself. Okay. Um, the original AudioQuest Night Hawk, these are one of my favorite headphones ever um, because the music sounds so good. Ah. It's neutral, it's clean, it does not have sort of an excess of treble at the high end. Some are gonna call them flat or lacking in the high end, um, though these are not nearly, it's, there's just, there's kind of a, in headphone geeks, they kind of argue like, oh, these have the veil. These aren't as sparkly as they should be. <laughs> I think they sound really, really natural. Uh, they are a semi-open design. You can kind of sort of see it yes, back there. Yes, you can. Um, but they actually do a pretty good job of blocking out background noise. I have spent a lot of time with these headphones. They are incredibly comfortable. Uh, they are built uh, specifically, uh, you know, Skyler, the guy who designed these, spent a lot of times basically eliminating distortion from these headphones. Oh. Whether or not you can hear that is up to debate, but I'm always a big fan of having less distortion. Mm -hmm. um, but seriously, I put them on, I am raging against the machine, I am getting my bluegrass on, and all of a sudden, <laughs> it's 3 a.m. <laughs> and these are insanely comfortable even it after. It looks like they fit your ears a lot better, too. They do. Well, they are very They're large, which fit over my ears. Yeah. Um, I'm bringing up this product from last year because a few weeks ago, AudioQuest released a carbon fiber version of the Nighthawks Ooh. and these, which are the Night Owl. Um, oh, cool. These are also the liquid wood from these, which is essentially a, a molded wood-based kind of plastic. Okay. Um, but uh, painted what I, I hear is Porsche carbon metallic. Oh, wow. And these are sealed not semi-open, and they come with two sets of ear pads. You know you're getting seriously geeky when there are two sets of ear pads in the box. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's They're true. Not technically entirely sealed. There's a super thin vent that runs along the perimeter of each dome, exiting through a hidden airflow resistive port, basically to allow the driver to not fight pressure inside the cup. Okay. Um, this is basically so it'll return faster. Okay. Uh, or Expand. In any case, it's good for the music. Mm -hmm. um, two sets of ear pads probably sounds really weird. There's protein leather ear pads, which I'm holding here, which seal tighter for better isolation and improved treble clarity. And the ultra suede, uh, which are basically ultra suede. You pet it, it feels nice. Oh, it does <laughs> feel nice. Which breathe freer for greater comfort and enhanced bass impact. So you might be thinking, this sounds silly. Yeah. You have that face on. Headphone geeks often swap ear pads to tweak headphones. This is really common. In fact, it is one of the first mods a lot of people do to the Fostex T50 RP is to put yeah. different ear pads on because they kind of change the low end response. People also do this with tubes with amps or speakers in their living room. I, I actually, can't hear you, what? <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> I like the ultra suede sound a lot, but again, I like bass, whether it's Yo-Yo Ma or Rage Against the Machine. Um, check out this cable. It is burly. Um, it comes wow, with silver-coated copper tips, uh, the really fancy quarter-inch one, which is still sitting at my desk. Uh, silver, silver. This is AudioQuest. They do cables, like $13,000 cables. Um, but one of the things I really liked about it is they have a microphone uh, and a single button, like single click, play, pause. Basically, you click it once uh, to answer calls or, or play or pause music. Uh, double click to uh, skip to the next track. Triple okay. click will take you to the previous track. Um, and you know, you have to, you know how sometimes when you turn and you hear the headphone cable in your earphones? Yes. You gotta work, like, like with this part up at the top where it gets skinny <laughs> to hear any kind of noise from the cable in your headphones. Well, that's nice. Yeah, you know, one of the things about the, the AudioQuest lineup is they're, they're paying attention to a lot of details. Yeah. Um, I was also laughing because there's a storage bag inside the incredibly protective case. What? <laughs> yeah, well, it's interesting, you know. If you don't want to carry the giant case, I don't know if you can see the giant it's case. It's huge. It's yeah. huge. And there's a huge amount of padding inside of here. But, you know, if you want to just throw them in your bag 
and travel with them, which is not something that you would really do with the original version of these. So this is a smartphone friendly audiophile sealed headphone. I'm gonna say the treble is a little more forward than the original Nighthawk, but it's not treble in your face uh, and your ears hurt levels. <laughs> I'm maybe 20 or 30 hours into the recommended 150 hours of active listening before making any critical mm. assessments. Okay. Uh, but I wanted to talk about these because I like them a lot. Uh, and you know. They seem very nice. They seem very, very nice. And you know, if you got 20 bucks, I got the Monoprice headphones for you. The link is on the website, techthing.com. <laughs> yeah, I got you from $20 to $4,000. Yeah, you at do. At that point, I'm cutting you all <laughs> off. Because you don't need my help if you're spending $50,000 You know, like headphones. every price point for headphones. It's crazy. Well, okay. I will, I will stop now. I just... Well, moving on from just headphones, uh, we are going to be going to CES in 2017. It shows up in January every <laughs> single year in Las Vegas. The new year oh doesn't boy. start until after CES. I it's love true. CES. CES is fun. Uh, so if you are wondering what tech is coming up for 2017 or CES, I'm really curious. I want to know what you are curious about. Yeah. You can email us over at askattechthing.com or you can tweet at snubs or at Patrick Norton at snubs at tech thing <laughs> and let us know what you want to see from the show and from 2017 in general, we're very interested to hear what you would like to know all about. What future of technology do you want what to know about the, the most? Future? Scott from Connecticut wrote askatechthing.com. The last time I owned a PC with Windows was Windows 95. Since then, I have used Mac. But with the lack of a good MacBook Pro this year, the new one is just so behind the times, I am thinking of going to Windows. What would be a good PC with 16 gigs of RAM and an SSD drive? Thanks, Scott from Connecticut. Yay! <laughs> I'm excited about this. So uh, 16 gigs of RAM, it, it's a lot of memory, and that is going to cost you for that memory because in a lot of terms, it's considered an upgrade from eight gigs of RAM. So figure it would be around 1500 at least. Yeah. But hey, you will probably also get a Core i7 CPU, a really, really nice yeah. screen, and a decent sized solid state drive with that price too. So uh, we looked up some awesome options for you. A lot of these, which, uh, I have seen, and then I believe you've seen one of them that I haven't gotten to see yet. It's but <laughs> it's frustrating because like a lot of them, you can't get 16 gigabytes in like a Core i5. Yeah. So they get you. So you're gonna get, get the i7, whether yeah. you want it or not. So first off, the Dell XPS 13, you have that pulled up on your screen. We have those sitting on the table in front of us. We do. <laughs> so this one does come in with a 16 gigabyte version, but again. 1500 1599 in this case, so it's going to be a little costly. Uh, HP Spectre 360, uh, X360, a lot of people are enthusiastic about this one, and it has probably the simplest web page to configure uh, the laptop you want. So you'd be like, oh, oh that's nice. Gigabytes. Well, you know, if you want a Core i5, not going to get 16 gigabytes. Yeah. Core i7, you can get 16 gigabytes. And hey, there's one ready to ship right now. Oh, $1,349, cool. getting a little cheaper. <laughs> uh, Lenovo's ThinkPad X1 Carbon is another option. Yes, it does say $888 right here, but that is for the lower gigabytes, lower RAM version. So if you want 16 gigs, again, that is going to cost you a few hundred extra. Uh, but this one is a very stunning machine, and the X1 Carbon is one that I, I've gotten to review and play around with, and I really enjoyed it. So mm -hmm. it's a good recommendation. Uh, the Microsoft Surface 4, a uh, Surface Pro 4, excuse me, uh, this one is also starting at $899, so less than $1,000. But again, the RAM does include a few hundred dollars on there if you want to upgrade to 16 gigs because that's not the starting point. <laughs> I believe in the tech specs they offer like 4, 8, and 16 or maybe it's just 8 and 16. I bet that but, 899 one is 4 gigabytes. Yeah, but uh, this is uh, recommended by Darren. Darren uses mm -hmm. this as one of his go-to laptops for editing. So if you're considering using it for something like editing, uh, Darren uses his all the time. So It's nice. Yeah, it is and a nice machine. They finally got the keyboard to awesome with this version. <laughs> yes! Yes, it only took four. <laughs> oh my goodness. Jerry summed up uh, something a lot of y'all have sent my way after last week when I said Doctor Who was not available for streaming online. Patrick, in case no one else has let you know, Doctor Who is available to stream on Amazon. By the way, thanks for that info I asked about regarding VMs on Windows 10 Home. Jerry from North Carolina. Yeah, so... One, you're welcome. <laughs> Two, I checked, can I stream it? <laughs> I did. 
No, I believe you. So there is actually a backstory on why uh, we both thought that it wasn't available online. It's because earlier this year, uh, they had removed Doctor Who from streaming services in America. So you, so I know for sure you could not find it on Netflix and you could mm -hmm. not find it on Hulu. It was discontinued on both of those. Maybe it was continued on Amazon after that fact, but mm -hmm. last time I checked, it wasn't available. So I'm really happy to see that it's on Amazon streaming because I was very upset that it was ten not seasons. no longer included on Netflix. Uh, do they have the 10th season available? 10th yeah. season is available. That's a good question. That's awesome. It says 10 seasons. So I'm thinking all 10 seasons are on there, which is oh, really season, exciting. Well, season 901. Oh, 901, okay. Prime. <laughs> I'm not seeing season 1001. Okay. Maybe oh. next year. Yeah. It's time for my every three or eight yet. year attempt to embrace Doctor Who. <laughs> so we just wanted to remind you before we wrap up, Tech Thing is going to be having a meetup at CES 2017. So you can come hang out with us over at Atomic Liquors. <laughs> it is a bar. So I'll show you where that site is. It's AtomicVegas.com. If you want to find out the location and all information on how to get there, it is in Las Vegas Central. Uh, so we're going to do that on Friday, January 6th at 7 p.m. So that is is after closing hours mm -hmm. for CES, you'll have time to go get, grab some dinner before yeah. hanging out with us to go grab some we'll cocktails be there and beers. Pretty much forever. Yeah, we'll we'll stay as long as we can stay alive. My flight is the next day, so I'll have to go sleep sometime. Yeah. But uh, check out our social networks. You can check us out at Tech Thing, at Snubs and at Patrick Norton on their uh, uh, Twitter and Facebook.com slash Tech Thing to find out more about the meetup and if anything changes. We aren't RSVP or making reservations at the bar, so we're just hoping people will show up. Please do. <laughs> so show up early if you want a seat. <laughs> but it's yeah. a pretty good time bar. It's it's a fun it place. Looks very it's downtown. If you haven't been downtown in Vegas, it's cool. You should check it's it out. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, we hope so to see you there. I hope to see you guys there. I'm driving this year. Oh, you are? Driving to see you. I am flying. Driving. I am going to fly. Oh, my goodness. Hey, I just wanted to say, as I fling <laughs> our teleprompter keyboard <laughs> around the room, um, just wow, 100 episodes. I want to thank all of you so much, seriously. Uh, Tech Thing is feeding my kids uh, and my family, and we couldn't do it without you watching and the support of so many of you on Patreon.com. So true. And, you know, basically everybody in the industry, as they say, who provide us with products to review and the advertisers that have stepped up uh, and trusted us to bring their message yes. to you. But mostly it is about you watching and enjoying and sending questions and tweeting at us and emailing us and doing thank all you. of the things which he said times a thousand. Thank, thank, you, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And speaking of which, um, this is so weird, Patrick. I have a video on my desktop. Uh, I don't know what this is. Maybe we should check it out. Hey, Patrick and Shannon, huge congratulations for filming your 100th episode of Tech Thing. We love what you guys do, and I can't wait to see the next 100 episodes. Always be tech thinging. Happy 100th episode to you. Happy 100th episode to you, Shannon and Patrick from Tech Thing. Happy 100th episode, you guys, from Bodega and Veronica. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, happy 100 tech thing. Let's see, 100. Uh, that's like half of Shannon's IQ. Uh, and uh, I remember when Patrick turned 100. It was two days before I did. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Patrick and I are much older. Uh, no, seriously, you guys, what a great accomplishment. 100 episodes. Here's to 100 more. Congratulations. Love you guys. You turned a hundred? Oh my God, you are so old. <laughs> the next hundred are going to be amazing. Congratulations to both of you and the entire team behind Tech Thing. I cannot wait to see more from you. Bye. Is this on? It is on. Hey, is that the camera hole? It sure is. Hey, I just wanted to thank uh, Patrick and Shannon for an uh, amazing run so far of the show. And I hope you guys continue forever and never stop. And also, you guys are great, and I love you guys, and my best, 
always and forever. Hey guys, congratulations on your 100th tech thing. That's pretty crazy. I'm looking forward to another 100 though, so uh, chop chop. Patrick, Shannon, congratulations on 100 years of tech thing. It seems like just a few years ago you guys launched and I can't wait to see what... Really, 100 episodes? Patrick, Shannon, congratulations on 100 episodes of Tech Thing. It seems like just the other day that you guys launched. I can't wait to see what happens in the next 100 episodes. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Shannon. It's Alan from Lifehacker. Congratulations on 100 episodes of Tech Thing. I love everything that you've done. Appreciate all the tips over the years. Appreciate the tips on how to build this computer back here and just upgrade it. Here's hoping you make it out for another 100 episodes, another 1,000 episodes. Keep up the great work. And the next time you guys are in New York, dinner's on me. I wish to congratulate Shannon and Patrick on their 100th episode of Tech Thing. However, I want more. More! More! <laughs> yeah. More. Shannon, Patrick, episode 100. Wow, congratulations. I am so excited to think it's been two years and you're now four. <laughs> and next week you'll be five. And then the beginning of next year, you'll be six and seven. And you know, I think I speak for the entire Tech Thing audience when I tell you that I am very excited for 2035, episode 1000, when you turn eight. <laughs> there are 10 kinds of people in this world, those who like binary jokes and those who don't. <laughs> and then there's me, who's just so happy that you guys have brought so much joy to the Hack 5 warehouse. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Surprise. I'm going to go cry. <laughs> oh, well, we'll go ahead and leave it there. No analog pick this week, but remember, you can always send them in. And again, thank you to everyone for contributing yeah. to our show and helping us grow it as much as we have. And thank you so much to our friends. We're going to link to them below because a lot of them also have Patreon accounts, too. And we really support their starters. <laughs> yeah, we, we love supporting them, and we really appreciate the support that all of our friends bring our way. So I'm Shannon Morse. I'm Patrick Norton. <laughs> we'll see you next week on Tech Thing. Namaste. You're welcome. Thank you. I sent everybody messages like oh my goodness. two weeks ago, and I was like, do you want to send us videos? <laughs> it's a surprise. <laughs> oh. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Oh my goodness. Yay! Oh. So, do 100 more. <laughs> I was definitely not editing a video for Darren. I was editing that. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I gotta do this thing real quick. So, I'll see you in a bit. Can we start later? Of course we can. Do you like that? Yeah. What is the future? With our faces. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.